What is going on, guys? Gamers Goon here today with your AEW Forbidden Door preview and predictions. Now, I'm recording this on Sunday. We're just a few short hours away from the Forbidden Door. AEW, New Japan combining for once to make a big major pay-per-view for the first time since All Out, or actually All In. Um, it should be interesting, man. Um... I do have a couple problems with this pay-per-view, mostly more so the build. You're trying to sell it to an American audience. We usually like to watch build, um, but when you get to if you get to the New Japan audience, though, they like good matches, and I don't think that the matches are going to be bad. I think they're going to have good wrestling. The only concern I really have is with build, um, and hopefully it does fulfill the requirements or the expectations that everybody's having for it. Um, going into it, because it should be interesting, it's going to have a bunch of good matches, the only problem is, I don't know if they're going to get you to care about it, and that sometimes is an issue with AEW, so hopefully that's no, not an issue with this show, um, but the first one on the pre-show, we had three pre-show matches, this show's going to go wild, man, it has 12 matches on the entire card, it's probably going to go about four or five hours, something like that, somewhere around that time span. Um, but we have three pre-show matches, and we're starting it off with an eight-man tag team match between the Gun Club. We got Billy Gunn, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and we got Max Caster in their corner going up against Yuya Uyamura and New Japan, La Dojo, Alex Coughlin, the DKC, and Kevin Knight. Um, man, I'm looking at uh, these pre-show matches. I don't necessarily think have a favorite. When I'm thinking about them, I'm thinking of what makes more sense for later on in the show. Who do I think later on is going to win? Obviously, I think it's going to be fairly split down the middle on New Japan AEW because it would be kind of a spit in the face for AEW to have it one sided, kind of a spit in the face for New Japan to come over to America and have it one sided their way. Um, so when I'm thinking about this, I, I'm, I'm thinking about what I think is going to happen down the card. Um, and. The gun club just aren't important enough, in my opinion, to win. Um, the ass boys, I don't think they're they're as important as... I mean, yes, they're big fan favorites. Everybody loves Max Caster. Everybody loves the ass boys. Everybody loves Bowens. Everybody loves everything to do with that group um, and the acclaimed and all of them. But I don't think they're important enough to have a win over New Japan. So I'm actually going to take Yuya Uemura... New Japan, La Dojo, and I think they're going to win. Um, like I said, I'm looking down the card more so than at the specific match um, because this is going to be a little bit harder to predict because it's not really based off storyline going into this pay-per-view. This is literally going to be a pay-per-view where they're wanting to give us good matches and they're going to want to give us um, stuff we can enjoy rather than following necessarily a set path that they had planned um so i'm gonna go with the new japan crew on the pre-show match um simply because i think down the line it opens up more opportunities for new japan guys to win on the main show that i think are a little bit or well it opens more um opportunities for AEW guys to win on the main show which i think is a little bit more prominent for an AEW pay-per-view that maybe they get maybe one or two more wins on the main show rather than winning on the pre-show um, because it is their company at the end of the day. Um, next, we have a pre-show match between the Factory, QT Marshall, and Aaron Solo going against Bishaman, which is Hiroki Gato and Yoshihashi. Um, this one, I'm doing the same thing I did for the last one. you got to look down the card for this one. Um, I'm not very familiar with Hiroki G Gato. Um, however, I've seen a little bit of Yoshihashi, and I think... Once again, this is another situation that they're going up against people that are really disposable within AEW, somebody that is not necessarily somebody that they need to win um, for Team AEW. So I'm going to go once again with Team New Japan winning this one, and I'm going to have Hiroki Gato and Yoshihashi winning in the second pre-show match um, and beating a disposable The Factory and probably picking up a win over Solo, to be honest. I don't know. Um, and then we have Swerve in our glory, Swerve Strickland, Isaiah Swerve Scott from the NXT days, and Keith Lee, the glorious Keith Lee, 
bask in his glory. Um, versus Suzuki Goon, El Desperado, and Yoshibatu Kanemaru. Um, once again, yes, you're looking down the cards thinking maybe one thing has to lead to another thing. Because I'm going to try to make it as even out as possible to make the most sense out of this card. Um, but if you look at the, the Swerve in Our Glory is guys in AEW that I think they want to push. They're guys that in AEW have potential to be bigger um, at the moment. Have potential to go on and potentially maybe make a tag team run or maybe even split off and go on their own singles run um, for the North American Championship or the North Atlantic Championship or whatever. I think both of these guys have potential to move on and do something within AEW. So I think it's going to be more prioritized for the Swerve in our glory to win than some of the other guys on the pre-show. Um, and let's be honest, the this isn't the the greatest two of Suzuki Goon, um, in my opinion. So I'm going to have Swerve in our glory, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee winning Bask in his glory. Um, and then let's, let's, let's just start it off with an AEW versus an AEW match. Let's start it off with Friendly Fire. Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm, singles match for the AEW Women's World Championship. Man, this one's got me, man. This one's got me. Um, Rosa obviously has had the title for a little bit now. Um, big fan of Rosa. She's been phenomenal. Um, She's had it for, how about, April, May, June, about the end of June, so she's at March, April, May, like four or five months going on. It could be Tony time. It could. Ah, man, I don't know. I don't know. It could be Tony time. I'm just trying to think of what, else, what other title changes I could see happening on this show. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off on a limb and say Tony Storm wins this one. Um, I think it's gonna be a really good match. Obviously, Thunder Rose is one of the better in-ring women wrestlers and better in-ring wrestlers in the entire company. Same thing with Tony Storm, both of them very talented in the ring. Um, I'm gonna go with Tony, hesitantly. Um, I think this will be a very good match, a dark horse match. For potentially match of the night, um, which is saying a lot with how stacked this card is. You got Tanahashi on this card. You got Okada on this card. You got Pac on this card. You got a lot of guys on this card that have put on great matches. This might be one of the matches that might be a little bit of a dark horse candidate to be one of those contending matches for match of the night, in my opinion. Um, but I'm going to go Tony time. Um, next, let's go to... Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy, a match that I did not expect to see. Um, I do not, I did not imagine Orange Cassidy would be the opponent of Will Ospreay. Um, I would have thought Ospreay was going to go up against somebody much bigger, maybe like an Adam Cole or a, or a Hangman. Or I mean, obviously Brian's out of the picture, but you would have thought Ospreay's going to go up against somebody bigger. But they gave you Orange Cassidy. They gave you somebody that's a fan favorite in AEW, and I'm thinking, what a moment it would be if Orange Cassidy was to win the IWGP United States Championship. What a fucking moment that would have been. Unfortunately, I don't see it happening. There's no way Will Ospreay walks into Chicago and loses to Orange Cassidy. I would love for it to happen because it would be a fucking awesome fucking moment for Orange Cassidy to be... Holding the IWGP United States Championship. That would be a fucking brilliant moment. A fucking awesome visual. But at the end of the day, it's Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay. I see zero opportunity. Will Ospreay losing to Orange Cassidy. I'd be shocked if it were to happen. Alright, let's get into the Bullet Club. Going up against Dudes with Attitudes. Um, the Bullet Club has El Fantasmo, the Young Bucks. And is that it? I think that I think I think that's it. Um, yeah, it's a six-man tag, and then it, they're going up against Darby, Sting, and Shingo Takagi. Um, man, man, I don't I don't understand why the Young Bucks needed to win the championships a few weeks ago in that ladder match. I don't understand it. Um, I don't agree with it. Um, 
Obviously, they had set up the Christian turn. Do I give a fuck about Christian? No, but it happened. Um, and it didn't really even... I thought maybe they would go into, like, defend the tag team championships. They're not even doing that. Um, but I guess here... I guess here makes the most sense for an AEW win. Um, because... I mean, obviously it's split. You have El Phantasmo and Shingo um, but on each team. So the Bullet Club is more so New Japan focused. Dudes with Attitudes aren't necessarily as New Japan focused. I'm going to go Dudes with Attitudes simply because AEW got to pick up some wins, man. They got to pick up some wins. And the Young Bucks are somebody that they can take a couple pins here or there and be perfectly fine. Um, where do we want to go next? Where do we want to go to next? Let's go to the AW All Atlantic Championship. Let's go there, why don't we? We got Pac versus Miro versus Malachi versus Clark Connors in the AW All Atlantic Championship. I don't even know what the fuck's going to happen here, man. Um, I don't think it should go to Miro. He's been the TNT champion. Um, I don't think... I don't think it's going to go to Clark Connors. So at least Pac and Malachi, um, at least in my opinion. Um, and Pac's been there forever. He's been there since day one for AEW. Malachi, somewhat new, fits the mold of somebody that they want to push right away um, and give him a championship. I'm going to assume that it's going to go to Malachi here. I'm going to take Malachi Black as the AEW All-Atlantic champion. Um... That one's a tough one to predict for me, man. That's a tough one for me to predict. Um, and then let's get into the six-man tag of Les Sex Gods. Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki going up against the team of Eddie Kingston, Willer Yuta, and Shota Umino. Um, once again, this is very split down the middle. Only one in, in New Japan guy on each side. It's not really necessarily team... New Japan versus Team AEW. It's just the teams facing each other. Um, and with Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara getting one over recently, um, I think yeah, I think on the pay-per-view, you probably got to go Eddie Kingston's team winning here. Everybody loves Eddie. Everybody wants to see Eddie get Chris Jericho back. Everybody loves to see Eddie Kingston beat Chris Jericho's ass. Um, I, I would take Eddie Kingston here, Will Yuta, and Shota Umino um, here for this one. So that's where I'm going to go with that pick. Um, then we got... Then where do we want to head? We want to head to the FTR match. FTR, which is Harwood and Wheeler, obviously. Um, defend. What are they defending? Three-way winner-take-all match. Um, Ring of Honor Championship and the IWGP, or IWGP Tag Team Championships. So, obviously both those are on the line. Um, the United Empire, Great O'Conn and Jeff Cobb. Great O'Conn's... His, his social media game is something else, man. He is something else. Um, and then they're going up against Rapogi, Vice, Trent, Beretta, and Rocky Romero. Trent. Uh, I'm interested to see what Trent can do, man. I'm interested to see what Trent can do with a, a, not necessarily a new teammate, but not not Chucky e. T. Um, but you look at it. The ones that make the most sense here to win is probably FTR. I don't necessarily, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe um, Jeff Cobb and Great O'Conn go wrestle in Ring of Honor. Um, Trent and Rocky Romero obviously could fit that mold, but I think, I think it makes more sense for FTR to win and have them go over and have some matches. Um, and defend the IWGP, or IWGP Tag Team Championship. Um, I think it would be cooler to see that. So I'm going to take FTR here. Um, and then that leaves three matches. Probably the three biggest matches of the night. We got the TBA. To be announced opponent of Zack Sabre Jr. Going up against Zack Sabre Jr. Um, Brian Danielson will be selecting his opponent. Um, I don't know who this could be. I seriously can't even really guess of a name, really, to be honest with you. Because who makes sense here? 
Who makes sense here? Who's somebody of Brian Danielson's past? I I'm, I don't even I don't even have really a person prepared. Um, Zach Saber Jr. opponent. Oh, they're they're saying they're saying it might be one of those NXT guys that crossed paths with um, Danielson for a period of time, whether it's Gargano or whether or not it's um, Claudio, which is Cesaro. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know what fits the the mold here. Saber Jr. I'm I'm trying to think of what makes the biggest moment because this match probably is towards the beginning half of the show. Um, I imagine this is going to be a match, probably like three or four, somewhere. I wouldn't put it at the end, unless you really are going to give us a big surprise. Um, because what my my theory here is, this might not be as big of a surprise, and it might be a little bit of a letdown going into it. Um, you can't have that at the end of the show. Um, I'm gonna, oh, man. I, I, I guess I'm gonna go with. I guess I'm gonna go with Gargano. Um, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I still think Saber Jr. is gonna win. Um, I'm taking Saber Jr. no matter who it is um, at this point. Um, and then we get into the two matches I'm the most excited for. We have the four-way for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship: Jay White defending his title against Kazuchika Okada, Hangman Adam Page, and Adam Cole. The Battle of the Atoms, and then obviously. Kazuchika Okada, one of the greatest to ever step in a ring. Um, this match is going to be a absolute banger. This match is probably going to be one of the favorites for match of the night. You got Jay White in there, who is ultra talented. Kazuchika Okada, who is considered one of, if not the best in the world, up there with the Kenny Omegas, up there with the Ospreys, up there with them all. Um, then you got Hangman in there, who's been one of the biggest baby faces in AEW to date. And then you got Adam Cole, who's really on a good run in AEW as being one of those top guys that aren't necessarily having a title, but they are still in the, um, the frame, the, the, the frame of thought. Um, but, ah, man, Jay White just won that title. Jay White literally just won that title. Um, and with Jay White just winning the title, I can't justifiably say that he's going to lose the title. Um, I don't think Hangman goes to New Japan to defend that. I don't think Cole goes to New Japan to defend it. And I doubt they take the title off Okada just to put it right back on him at this pay-per-view. So I'm going to go Jay White here. And then, man, we got the biggest one of them all. We got Hiroshi Tanahashi going up against John Moxley. One of New Japan's greatest to ever step in the ring. Hiroshi Tanahashi going against one of AEW's best to ever go in the ring. John Moxley for the AEW World Championship, Interim Championship. Um, and the winner, obviously, eventually will go on to face CM Punk once he is ready to come back. Um, but holy shit, this is going to be a fucking barn burner of a match. This is a match we've been waiting years for. This is the match that everybody wants to see. This is the match that is on the marquee. This is the match that is selling, is selling the tickets. This match right here. And I get in chills just speaking about this match because this match could be something special. Roshi Tanahashi, if you don't know, is literally one of the greatest in-ring performers in New Japan history. He is their Shawn Michaels. Their era is Shawn Michaels. Going up against John Moxley, one of the most popular wrestlers in AEW right now. This match is going to be great. And I... I, I don't know if I fully believe this... But I'm making my first huge, bold prediction. And I'm going to put a guarantee on it. And I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to put my guarantee on it. I guarantee that at the end of the night in Chicago, Illinois, in the United Center, home of the Chicago Bulls, Hiroshi Tanahashi will be walking out as the AEW Interim World Champion. That might be crazy. That might be crazy. John Moxley is the one signed to AEW. John Moxley is the one that will be around. John Moxley is the one that doesn't have to stay and defend the title. John Moxley is the one that can be on TV each week. Tanahashi doesn't have that luxury. 
but I'm going to put a bold prediction that Tanahashi is going to beat John Moxley. I have a gut feeling. I don't know what, why or how this gut feeling is happening, but I think Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to shock the world and beat John Moxley. All the odds are stacked against Tanahashi. And the whole storyline of John Moxley chasing him around, wanting to conquer him once and for all, wanting to finally reach the level of of Hiroshi Tanahashi, wanting to beat him in the States, wanting to beat him for the AEW World Championship, wanting to do all these things, and obviously facing him in his home brand. All the signs point to John Moxley winning, except me. I'm pointing towards Hiroshi Tanahashi winning. And I might be stupid for saying that. I might be predicting this very incorrectly. I might be looking like an idiot at the end of this. But I'm going Hiroshi Tanahashi. And at the end, if I'm right, I look like a genius. But if I'm wrong, I look like an idiot. But at the end of the night, that's going to be a goddamn good match. I'm looking forward to this show, man. I'm looking forward to this show. Obviously, some of these matches didn't have as much build as the others. Um, obviously, the Tanahashi match is the one that's selling the show. Um, obviously, you put Jay White and Okada on a show. It's going to sell. Obviously, you got a lot of these New Japan top guys um, on the show. It's going to be good. You get Sabre Jr. on there. You get an Osprey on there. These are literally talent that are in conversations for being top ten in the world. They probably have a good four or five tonight alone that are in the top ten that are going to be wrestling. That is wild. That is wild. Usually you maybe get one or two of the top 10, 20, 30 guys in the world. Tonight, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. It's going to be a game changer. The only question is, who wins the game? Is it AEW? Is it New Japan? Or is it the fans? Very well could be the fans. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, it's, been, it's been a great time. Uh, but at the end of the night... The Forbidden Door will maintain being open for a little while. But at the end of the night, it might close. But the one the one thing that's for sure is that for a good three or four hours, we get to step through that Forbidden Door and experience a damn good wrestling show. So if you're watching the show, I hope you enjoy. If you're not watching the show, I do understand the build isn't necessarily the build that draws in the viewers um, that AEW currently has necessarily, it draws in more so the hard, um, the hardcore fans, the guys that really just are willing to wait until three or four a.m. to watch the New Japan shows or know all these guys. Um, I understand if you're not gonna watch this show or you don't want to pay the fifty dollars, but this is gonna be a damn good show. So if you do pay the fifty dollars, enjoy it, enjoy it for what it is, um, enjoy it for the content, not necessarily the storylines, enjoy it for the matches, the matches are going to sell this show, they're going to be worth it, they're going to be great, and I'm excited for it, thank you guys for watching, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, do all that fun stuff, and let me know down below who you think is going to win and walk out of the Forbidden Door victorious, um, because I just told you who I think will.